Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to find mistakes or errors in a company's income statement. So I'll be jumping into my computer here, I'm gonna show you going through revenue and expenses line by line, where are the areas that have that most frequently have accounting errors or misstatements. And for example, here looking at revenue, you have interest income, and why would a company show interest income in its operating revenue? It makes no sense. So we're gonna go through this line by line, and I'm gonna show you all of the accounting errors in this income statement. This is the topic of this video today, so stick around. Around. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. My name is Bill Hanna. I'm the financial controller. I'm a licensed CPA in the great state of New York, and I have over 15 years of experience in the field of finance, where I started out at PricewaterhouseCoopers as an auditor, and then I transitioned out to private industry, and then I worked my way up from a financial analyst position all the way up to a corporate controller position, which is what I do today. And this channel is all about giving you the summary or the juice of my experience over the last decade and a half. And I do this here in the YouTube channel, as well as on my website, through blog posts, an online course, and templates. So go ahead and check that out as well. All right, jumping into the income statement here to try and figure out what's going on. So this income statement, obviously, as you would imagine, is broken down into revenue and then expenses. And then when you look at expenses, it's further broken down by cost of goods sold, operating expenditure, and then here you have non-operating expenses, which is gonna be depreciation, interest expense, and income taxes. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is try and figure out what kind of company is this by looking at the income statement. So looking here at the income statement, you can see that they have cost of goods sold, and that will tell you that this is a manufacturing company, right? And then within the manufacturing space, you can also look further into expenses and figure out what kind of manufacturing is this. So you can see here that they have food inventory COGS or food inventory cost of goods sold. So this tells you that this is a food manufacturing operation. All right, so keeping that in mind, keeping in mind that this is a food manufacturing company, let's go through the revenues and expenses and figure out what's wrong with this income statement. So the first line here in revenue is gross unit revenue. Uh, and in January is 61,000, and then it's 37, and then it's eight, and then it's 11. So it kind of fluctuates a lot throughout the year. And normally this would be a sign that there's some sort of an accounting uh, error here or misstatement. Uh, but this is a manufacturing company, a food manufacturing company. So it relies on receiving purchase orders from its uh, distributors to make sales, right? So this makes sense that it can fluctuate throughout the year. If this was a subscription company or a software company, this would be a different matter because then you should expect the revenue to be sort of steady and not fluctuate up and down so much. Uh, so in here, we think this is fine for interest income. Now, this is a manufacturing company. Why would it have interest income in its revenue and it makes no sense? So this is the first accounting mistake here, that this company is recording an interest income in its operating revenue, right? When is the only case where interest could be an operating revenue? Is if the company is a bank. If this is, we're looking at a financial institution, interest then, if you earn interest, that could be a, a part of revenue, right? But in this case here, uh, it seems that this company is making some kind of interest income from its deposits with the bank. And in this case, this is a non-operating um, item. So this should go down in the income statement uh, somewhere down here in the non-operating uh, expense income and expenses. It shouldn't be up here with revenue. So this line here, uh, interest income is the first mistake. And then going through expenses. So the first thing we look at here, and this is the area where companies make mistakes, is looking at the gross margin. And obviously the gross margin is the percentage uh, and it's taken basically uh, dividing the gross margin or gross profit, dividing it by revenue. So looking at that number here, 31% uh, in January, and then it's negative 55% in February. And this is a sign of something is wrong here, right? Um, and then March, you got 26%, 27, so it fluctuates. Uh, it gets a little bit more steady toward the end of the year, but something is definitely wrong, especially in February with a negative 55% in, um, in gross margins. So this will definitely mean that something is wrong here with the items that are being recorded in cost of goods sold. So you can look at them individually and figure out is, uh, if some of them may seem inappropriate or something seems off. So with food inventory COGS or food inventory cost of goods sold, you see they're recording here a number and it kind of fluctuates. So the first thing is to try and see if that number uh, fluctuates in the same direction as revenue. So you can say here, you can create a formula and say equals. Uh, this as a percentage or divided by revenue, right? 
So it's 36% and then you drag that across and then see where you land. So 36, 35, 31, 32. So it's not bad, right? So this line here is trending nicely with revenue, which indicates you know, to a certain extent that this company is recording cogs in this line here um, at the same direction. You take uh, packaging, you try that, you see packaging um, should trend in a similar direction to revenue. You drag that across and you got six, 91% in February, whoa, that makes zero sense. So I'm gonna highlight that in red, right? So here, something is up here. So in February, packaging cogs, right? Boom, 35,000 in packaging cogs. And this probably means that the company wrote off or you know, uh, kind of had some packaging that was obsolete, is, was no longer using, or maybe was lost or destroyed in some kind of issue or fire. Um, so basically 35,000 here of packaging suddenly where each month is like 700, 600, suddenly 35,000 in Feb, uh, obviously this is uh, an issue. So this is a question that you will have for management. All right, so so far we said that for cost of goods sold, we have food inventory cogs here, which seems to be trending with revenue nicely. And then packaging cogs has an issue in February where suddenly there's a big slug of 35,000 in packaging that you need to figure out why is this recorded all in one shot in February. And then the next item is delivery in. Um, so delivery in, uh, typically delivery in of uh, goods or packaging or raw material is part of inventory and thus part of cost of goods sold. So here I can see that it's zero each month, right? And this kind of makes no sense. Uh, so this one here could be a potential problem. Why is this company has zero of delivery in COGS? And then the next item is delivery out COGS. Now with delivery out, unlike delivery in, uh, delivery out shouldn't be part of COGS, right? So this is a problem here as well. Why is the company recording uh, delivery out as part of COGS? And this is what's causing the gross margin to fluctuate or the margin percentage to fluctuate so severely because suddenly in Feb they have a big amount, 9,000 um, in, in delivery out COGS, which shouldn't be recorded in COGS, it should be recording down here in operating expenditure. So uh, to recap, uh, COGS, uh, delivery in COGS should be recorded and they have zero here. I'm not sure why, so this is a potential problem. And then you have delivery out. Delivery out should not be part of COGS. Delivery out should be down, down in operating expenditure. All right, so to recap, so far we found an issue with revenue where they recorded income uh, from interest up here in operating revenue, where it shouldn't be here. And then for uh, COGS, we found that they recorded a big slug for packaging uh, in February, and then they have no delivery in, and delivery out shouldn't even be here. It should be down here in operating uh, expenditure. So now jumping into operating expenditure. All right, so analyzing operating expenditure, the first item is gonna be payroll expenses. And so the first line is executive where they recorded the salary of this executive. And as you can see here, is steady each month, the same amount, which seems fine to me. And then for operations, salaries, um, here are the numbers, uh, monthly 7,500, 7,500. Uh, but then suddenly here, if you look in November, there's sudden uh, 25,000 amount. And this tells me that this is a number that should have probably been accrued uh, throughout the month. Um, so this is probably some bonus that they paid. Um, so that should have been accrued over the period that it pertains to. Uh, it shouldn't be, shouldn't be all recorded in one month here as 25,000. Uh, but this is not a huge problem because for the full year, uh, the, the entire year in aggregate, it should be fine in terms of presentation. It's just a problem when you present it on a monthly basis. This should have been broken down on a number of months. And then after that, we have sales and marketing, and this is fine. Each month, they're recording the salary, and it's kind of flat or straight line. And then technology, here is the salary. It seems to be the same each month, which makes sense. And then after that, you have chef or nutritionist. Uh, so this number here, it's it's kind of small, like the lot amount is, is small, uh, but typically a chef, the salary for a chef would normally be in COGS, right? Because what goes into the costing of inventory is gonna be direct material and direct labor and overhead. And this is uh, probably a direct labor. If it's a chef who's making the food, this usually is a direct labor and should be part of inventory. And then when it's sold, it becomes part of cost of goods sold. Uh, so this here is a potential problem. It's a small dollar amount, so I'm not gonna focus too much on it. 
and then packaging. So this is the salary for the packaging person. Uh, this definitely is a uh, direct labor to inventory and so it doesn't belong here. It doesn't belong in operating expenditure. The packaging item here or the salary should be up here in uh, packaging cogs. Uh, so this is a mistake here as well. Packaging is a direct labor and should be part of cogs. Preparation is the same thing. So if you're preparing your inventory or the items you're selling, preparation is also cost of cogs. Uh, so this is definitely also direct labor and shouldn't be here. Uh, customer service, um, you know, you could argue it's also part of uh, cost of goods sold, uh, but I've seen many companies record that in operating expenditure, so uh, we're not going to make a big deal out of this one. Uh, miscellaneous or admin, uh, this is fine. In COGS, legal, uh, there is zero expenses, um, which is kind of odd, uh, but uh, not a mistake on and itself. Uh, payroll taxes, um, you just look at that and see if the amount fluctuates in any strange way, and it doesn't. Uh, which is also strange because you see uh, we have a big slug of 25,000 in salaries here uh, So I'd expect maybe the payroll tax to be high in the same months um, and it's not so Not a mistake in itself, but definitely something to question um, And then after that you have credit card uh, processing costs, um, which is fine in operating expenses uh, corporate office rent um, an office rent is definitely part of overhead here, so it's fine. It's not, uh, you know, shouldn't be in COGS or anything. We're fine here. Office and admin supply cost, you see here they're recording small amounts each month, so this should be fine. Um, you have admin uh, software costs, so this they're recording here the cost of the software. Uh, that seems to be um, okay um, and should be part of uh, operating expenditure. And then you have tax and legal services, um, utility expenses professional services, um, and then you have industrial kitchen rent. So this is a rent for the kitchen where they are making the actual product. And so this is part of overhead that is directly attributed to inventory and it shouldn't be here. This should be part of cost of goods sold. So this here should be the, uh, attributed to the inventory and then uh, becoming part of the actual cogs for the food that's being made. So industrial kitchen rent, definitely is an overhead that is attributed to inventory and it shouldn't be here in operating expenditure. So this one should definitely move up. And then you have pallet shelving costs. Uh, this is fine, uh, 200 is kind of a flat amount. And then you have a refrigeration, freezer. Uh, it's a small amount. You can argue that this is part of the inventory. Um, so this should be part of COGS, but also it's, it's not a huge amount, so it should be fine. Uh, research and development um, should be here, that's fine. Marketing cost is also fine. Uh, so for operating expenditure, we found a few issues. We found that for salaries for operations, uh, there is a huge slug in, in the month of November, 25,000. It should have been accrued throughout the month. Uh, and then we found some salaries here for chef. Uh, packaging and preparation that is potentially part of the cost of the inventory and it should be part of COGS. And then down here, we found uh, that they're recording the rent as an operating expenditure, while the industrial kitchen rent uh, is the place where they're making the actual product and should be part of COGS uh, or the costing of the inventory and then therefore part of COGS. Uh, so this sums up what we found wrong here with operating expenditure. All right, so jumping here into non-operating expenses and we have depreciation, interest, and income taxes. Uh, and look at depreciation here. Uh, that should be straight lined uh, each month. So we have 706, 706, kind of fluctuates a little bit. Um, and then you have here a big slug in October, $10,000. So this is something you wanna question. Why is it 10,000 recorded in October? That could be the company writing off uh, any of its fixed assets, uh, or it could be an error. So definitely something to flag and figure out what's wrong here. And then you have interest expenses. This is the company recording um, some sort of interest expense on a loan that it has. Um, and it's constant each month, about 8,000 and change. So this makes sense. Uh, you wanna see the consistency. You don't wanna see a big slug all of a sudden in one of these months. So this one is consistent. And then for income taxes, we look here, we find kind of zero, zero, zero. So there's nothing recorded in income taxes. And then suddenly you have 5,000 being recorded in September. So that kind of makes you question whether the 5,000 should have been accrued throughout the months. Um, and then you gotta also figure out, you know, why do they have income tax liability? Because if you look down here in net income, uh, you'll have that, uh, you'll see that they are in, in a net loss position. So this is a loss. Um, so obviously when you have a loss, you shouldn't owe income taxes, but it's still that may be some sort of a, you know, minimum tax that you owe in certain states. Um, but you wanna question whether that should be spread out throughout the months. 
So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new from it. If you did, smash that like button and share this video with someone that you think might learn from it or enjoy it. And I'll see you in the next video.